Hi there! Welcome to Palette University. So this is just going to be a really quick video about something I noticed when I was playing through an older Pokemon game the other day. First, a little bit of background as to why I was playing through this game. So, as you may know, I am a huge, huge fan of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon franchise. Um, they are by far my favorite side games of the Pokemon franchise. And Red Rescue Team is my favorite, probably my favorite video game of all time, period. Let alone my favorite Pokemon game. Um, so when they were, when they announced that they were making like a, a remaster of the original Rescue Team games for the Switch, uh, I'd lost my mind. And in order to sort of prepare for it, I started replaying through some of the older ones uh, just to sort of bask in the nostalgia. Uh, from when those games came out. I didn't want to play through uh, the Rescue Team games because that's what's going to be coming out, and I didn't want to... I mean, I already kind of know the story, like the back of my hand. Uh, I've played through it so many times, but I didn't want it that fresh in my mind. So I replayed Explorers of Sky. Uh, I did not replay Gates to Infinity. Uh, that is probably the worst Pokemon game of all time. Uh, if you... Even me, as like a super fan of Mystery Dungeon, that is an awful game. If you ever have the chance to play it, don't. Do not do that. It will be a waste of your time. However, when I came up with the idea for this video, I was replaying Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, which was the most recent installment in the Mystery Dungeon franchise. It came out in Japan in uh, like mid-year 2015, and then came out, I think, early year 2016 here in the West. In Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, one of the shopkeepers uh, whose services you can use basically in any town that you're in is Hawlucha. And i never really given Halucha too much of a thought, you know. Halucha, I think, is a neat design. I like the idea of crossing sort of a bird with, like, a Mexican wrestler. And fighting flying is such a really cool typing. Uh, but other than that, I hadn't really thought too much about its design from sort of, like, a, a biologist perspective. But when you are in Halucha's shop, when you are talking to him uh, using his services, this little screen comes up on the bottom screen of the 3DS. And, uh, it, you know, it does this for every shop. Each shop has different art. So I found myself paying closer attention to some of these art pieces. And that's when I noticed that Halucha has hands. And, like, yeah, it seems kind of obvious because how it stands, it's not like it holds its arms down by its side. Its arms are always up and ready. Um, but it's just not something that I ever noticed before. And then I'm like, wait, isn't this supposed to be a bird? Like, that was just my first sort of instinct, because, like, it's it's a flying type, and the vast majority of flying type Pokemon are birds, and also, its name is Haw Lucha. The Haw presumably, uh, presumably comes from the word Hawk, and Lucha comes from Luchador, a Mexican masked wrestler. So, those couple of things seem to point to it being a bird, but there's literally no birds that have fingers as an adult. There is one species that has fingers as a chick that I've talked about on this channel before, uh, but it loses them as it uh, becomes an adult and sheds its uh, baby feathers and grows its flight feathers. Clearly, Halucha can fly, which leads me to believe that it is an adult animal, adult Pokemon. So, I didn't really know what to make of that. And then, as I was sort of paying closer attention to Halucha's wings, I noticed that if you look all of the sort of feathers on its wings, on uh, sort of the inside of its wings, are a different color than sort of the edge of the f most distal one, the farthest one from its body. It is the same color as uh, its arm and its hand. And there has only ever been one group of animals that has sort of an arm structure like that. And those are the pterosaurs. And when I, when I saw that this distal part of Halucha's wing looked the, you know, was the exact same color as, as, you know, the rest of its arm, that just sort of clicked to me that, oh, clearly Halucha is a pterosaur. Uh, you know, pterosaurs had three fingers, so pterosaur wings are a lot different than bird or bat wings. Uh, so bats, what bats do is they basically, they keep their thumb free, and then they just make all of their other four fingers really, really long, and just stretch skin between all of them. Birds, on the other hand, are just really weird. Birds fuse a lot of bones 
to give them more structural support because they lose a lot of support by making their bones so hollow. Uh, so in order to get that strength back, they sort of fuse them and make them a lot more rigid. So what birds do is they just sort of lose... I don't know for sure. They either lose the pinky and the ring finger, or they lose the pinky, ring, and middle finger. Uh, I'm more inclined to think that they just lose these two, but they might lose the middle finger. I'm not positive about that. Anyway, they just sort of fuse it together, and then the feathers sort of go from there. So they don't extend their fingers in the same way bats do. Pterosaurs, on the other hand, they lose their pinky. So they're, they only have four fingers. And then the ring finger sort of extends to about the same length or greater as the rest of the arm. And then from the tip of that, they stretch uh, a, you know, a pane of skin from that either to their hip or to their foot, depending on the group of pterosaur that it's in. However, when they do that, these three fingers are still free which allows pterosaurs to sort of fold their ring finger, uh, instead of folding it this way like we can, they fold it back. So when they're on the ground, they can walk uh, using the rest of their hand as essentially a foot in order to walk around on the ground. And I wonder, you can probably guess just based on what Pokemon this video is about, but what Pokemon has three fingers and then this weird thing off of its hand that it uses to fly? besides Aerodactyl. Halucha. And another sort of weak uh, piece of evidence for this is that there is sort of a hypothesis, not one that I personally believe in, but I'm also not that familiar with sort of the biomechanics of pterosaurs, but there are some people in paleontology that believe that pterosaur pterosaurs could not actually fly themselves, uh, that they instead would glide from place to place, uh, sort of like flying squirrels. Like I said, I don't personally believe that, but there are some people who study pterosaurs who do believe that. And Halucha, uh, when you uh, encounter the one in the overworld in Sword and Shield, when it flies at you, because it's very aggressive, it does not flap its wings at all. It jumps into the air and then glides at you. So. I don't know, that's another sort of, like I said, very weak piece of evidence, but it's something that I thought was really interesting given that context that, in my opinion, Hawlucha is probably some kind of pterosaur. But that is just my opinion, and I want to know yours. What do you think about this low stakes theory? As always, when I do low stakes theories, uh, I like to give a shout out to Brett Mew XYZ. Uh, their link will be down in the description. They were the first one to sort of introduce me to the format of, you know, that theory videos don't have to be these big extravagant world building things as much as i love those kinds of theories it's also fun to just have theories that ultimately have no bearing on the franchise whatsoever once again let me know your thoughts down below in the comments uh and make sure to keep an eye out for future things coming from the channel i have lots of videos planned about some of the weird biological things that would have to happen for different types of pokemon to function that the way the way they do and i don't mean types as in you know, Charizard versus Venusaur versus Blastoise or whatever. I mean, types is in, like, their elemental type. Uh, each type, I think, has... Except for normal. Normal's normal. But each type has something really interesting biologically that I really want to get into talking about. So that will be a future series coming soon. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be wrapping up our fossil series relatively soon. I have a couple more videos to make with that, so keep an eye out for those as well. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at palette underscore you to keep up on all things Pokemon science. As well as if you feel like this content is worthy of supporting, we do also have a Patreon, the link to which will be down below. And as always, there's a time and place for everything.